at 9.45 a.m. on May 28, 2003, Blair and, and his friend were returning from the Lindenwood McDonald's where they had met up with quite a few of their, of their friends. He was traveling northbound with his friend. He was a passenger in his friend's Mustang and uh, northbound on Kennington. Um, he turned left and a semi or a gravel truck um, hit the passenger side, which was the side that Blair was sitting on. Paramedics and fire, fire people got him out with the jaws of life, which took about 45 minutes. He started to experience trouble in the ambulance, so they rerouted him to HSC ER. When I walked in, I remember grabbing his hand and, and I could see a slight flickering in his eyelids and I remember saying to him, Blair, you're going to make it through this. You are a tough guy. You have graduation coming up in uh, uh, two weeks. You're going to turn 18 in a couple of weeks. You have your whole life ahead of you, and we're going to see you through this. And the family had gathered, uh, my wife and, uh, and uh, daughter, and uh, we sort of huddled around and supported each other while Blair lay on the gurney. After that, he finally opened his eyes, and, you know, I thought the worst part was over. He was alive. Um, and then after that, he was, he woke up and he was so different. And they warned us about it. They said, you know, he might not be able to talk or walk. And to see your bigger brother, sorry. We were overwhelmed with the amount of technology and expertise that went into saving Blair's life. and what started as a minute-to-minute -minute experience in the ER and ICU moved to probably an hour-to-hour, day-to-day. Just seeing him there with all the tubes and bags around him and everything, it was a little bit shocking. And what was so great is that if I would, I would go in there and they would explain to me all the different things around him that were keeping him alive. Um, so they weren't so scary anymore. One day I, I just woke up and I, was, I wasn't sure where I was. I thought I was in Stonewalls, like I, I didn't know. The rehabilitation process was a very challenging one for Blair. He really didn't know what happened to him and you could see that perplexed look and you could see that he was upset by what had happened to him. It's almost like starting off like infancy. You really, your body is like, has gone through so much trauma that it almost shuts down and starts back over again. I had to relearn to walk. I had to relearn to speak properly. Still to this day, I sometimes slur. I would say that Blair um, was so eager to kind of move forward with his life. Um, he knew he'd been given a second chance at life. Um, and so he took that into everything he did. All in all, we're very fortunate because he's the same guy personality-wise. <laughs> I would highly recommend that people consider donating to HSC Foundation. It goes to a very worthy cause. It is something that we are all going to use as Manitobans at one time or other. And for those of you who have already made donations and are considering making another, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts because it has made a difference. Our son is alive and he is well, and it is due to the efforts and the facility at HSC. HSC helped me in so many ways. They have everything covered. They tried to get me back to what I was before, and they did a pretty good job. Still, uh, still a pretty happy guy, and life is, I've moved on. Mm -hmm.